I sit on the chair below my block, then I see the head of the soldier. I <laughs> run. Hi. Hello. Hey, what's up? Do you have any ghost stories to share? Ooh. But before that, can you switch on all the lights in the room first? <laughs> the office one you want? <laughs> okay, so there was uh, one point in time where I was working really late at night and it was after 12 midnight. I mean, there were people in the office, but I think it was just two of us. So I left first and I went downstairs to the guard house lah, to book my grab. And because our office building is very ulu, like you have to enter like a really snaky type of road bend for you to get to the, to the end of the road where the building is. I was sitting down there waiting for my grab and I saw that my grab was reaching. And it was entering that little snaky bend and then it stopped halfway, you know. Then I'm just like, hey, why this grab stop halfway? Like, cannot see me or what? Like, I mean, my end location is at the end of the road. You are like already there. Why are you not driving in? So I called the guy and then, and then I was like, Uncle, like, uh, where are you? Can you just drive in a little bit more further to the end of the road? Then he said, oh, I cannot see, I cannot see. I said, Kinema, Uncle, I am going to walk towards you. You just stay where you are. So I was just walking and the thing is, I could see the grab right there in the center of the road. He could just have driven right, but he didn't, you know. So technically, the culprit here is him. As I was walking towards the car, he wind out his window, he was like, Hey boy, boy, run, 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 run! So I was like, huh, run? So I run ah. Then the thing is, I got a lot of press kids with me ma. So I was like, <laughs> Then the moment I entered the grab, I was really panting like, <sighs> He immediately like swerved and make a sharp turn to get out of that place. And then he began to on um, Quranic verses. And I was too like in shock of what happened for me to like, us because I was still catching my breath. I waited all, all the way till we entered the expressway. So I casually asked the uncle, I said, uh, Pachi, why just now you asked me to run? And then he looked at me from his rear view mirror. Uh, then he smiled and he said, Ah, uh, got one Pontiana was walking behind you, you know, like very fast. And then I'm just like, Oh, okay. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> And then we reached my house. So I lighted from the grab, I took all my stuff. So I was walking towards my lift lobby. And then I turned back and I saw the driver. He went out from his driver's seat. He went to the other side of the car to open the door as though he was letting somebody out. Oh, I got goosebumps. <laughs> then when I saw that, I was like, Okay, maybe he want to clean the carpet or something. But as he was opening the door, I could see his mouth like he was like saying some stuff. Like he was like, like as though he was whispering or talking. I, I don't know. Or maybe he was uh, reciting verses. So I posted it on my social media and people were all joking. Lah. They say, when you pay for grab, but you actually grab share. So rude at this people. <laughs> but it's true. Lah. Can you imagine if the entire time I was in the cab, he was there beside me. As the owner of house, and I are, are very close. So there's one time that he had this show at Gilman Barracks. So we decided to attend me and my friends and other interns in there as well. Now after the show and everything, right, we have a few drinks. It always happened to me, right, whenever I drink outside, I'm always the last one to get grabbed. Everyone go home ready, then I'm alone at Gilman Barracks. I don't know what, what like what came to me and I just walked lah. Okay, because I think before right, I thought it was near my place that I can walk. So I walk, walk, walk. Then I turn to this road. Then I feel like something is following me behind. <laughs> I was like, okay, Larry, it's just your imagination. It's just you. Nothing is here. No one is here. It's just you. You're in Singapore. It's a city. There's no ghost. That's what my mindset is, you know. Then I hear the footsteps, right? It's like getting a lot. They're like marching behind me. Then I was like, then I needed to, I needed to cross the road to go to the bus station. Like me, like expecting there will be bus at 2 a.m. Then as I turn right, right, I got the, what do you call that? The peripheral vision behind me. I see soldiers. Then when I saw that, you know what I did? I run. I fucking <laughs> run. Wow. Cannot say, ah. Now I remember I'm having goosebumps again, yeah. Wow, I can really hear the like soldiers marching. I saw them right. Then I'm booking grab. I cannot book any grab. Oh, then I was like, what the f? Then like, I waited for a long. Then I was like praying again and all. Then suddenly, uh, I I got a grab right. After he came, I fast um wrote on his grab. Then after that, I I told him what happened. Then he told me like before that Gilman barracks right is a soldier area. 
this is the scariest part. Cause after I reached my place, I was staying at Fair Park before, which is near the office. The block there is a bit too old. I I cannot go up because the lift is damn scary. And then I sit down with, below the block first. Because I don't know how to go up. Should I run? I don't know what to do. Later the elevator stops and whatever, then I don't know what to do lah. Then you know, I sit on the chair below my block. Then I see the head of the soldier on the on the post. It passed by. I couldn't run. I went outside to the bus station again, then I called my housemate. She was sleeping. Wow, I told her, I told her what happened. I was so scared, I was trembling and all. I was oh I I, I almost like crying already. She went down. But she was scared also, right? You know what she did? It's quite funny. She brought the cross and all. So there was this once. I went out like night cycling with my friends. I reached home maybe about 11, around there, 11, 11 ish. Uh, my family was out too. Uh, felt a bit weird here and there, but like mainly I thought, oh, because I'm home alone and I'm just like creeping myself out. Lah. And when my family came home, uh, my sister came into my room, talked a bit where the family went, blah, blah, blah. And then after that, she was about to leave my room. But the moment she reached the door, she like sprinted back towards me and just like buried herself into my body lah, in a sense. Just she looked very scared like, huh? What happened? What happened? And then she was like, oh, there's a pochong at my door. And I was like, what the heck, man? Why? <laughs> the one thing I, I know is like, uh, you cannot be afraid lah. Or rather, you cannot show fear because the more you are afraid and the more these things somehow will know. And my mother always taught me like if these supernatural things happen then you can just scold them. I was the elder brother, right? So I had to do something about it like So I had to step up. <laughs> Literally. The moment I walked to the door, right? Oh my god. All the hair on my body just stood up and I, I really felt like shit. Like, I, I cannot see but I really can feel my hair standing. So I just like scolded the thing. But in Malay lah. What are you doing here? Why are you disturbing my sister? Uh, get out of my room or get out of my house. Then I think for after a few seconds, uh, the feeling disappeared. Uh, apparently like East Coast because that's where I went like cycling right? yeah, apparently there's this area it's not say haunted lah but like dirty place and then like there will be spirits there or, like, especially like dusk time and then they might follow you and stuff like that might not sound like much uh, since I didn't really physically see anything but at the point of time yo I was like <laughs> cheating my pants <laughs> me and my dance club we had like a massive like night cycling from East Coast to Changi village. Along the way, there's this like super, 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 super long like expressway. So what happened was when we are coming back from like Changi village, we decided to split into two groups because like some people want to ride faster, some want to ride slower. I was with the fastest group. So as I was cycling, right, then I realized like why is like everyone cycling so far ahead? And then I can't even see like the first person in the slow group. So as time passed, then I realized I was cycling alone. I decided to turn back to check if like anyone is catching up. So when I turn back, then about like 30 meters away from me, I saw a corpse lying in the middle of the lane. So I was like, what the f what the, okay, just like pretend nothing happened, okay, just keep cycling. So I was like cycling. Then I'm very sure it was about like 15 minutes later. Okay, then I decided to turn back and check again. And then I saw the same thing. I can't be stuck in a loop or something, right? So I started like looking at the, the lamppost at the side, trying to look for a landmark to make sure I'm not like in a loop. After some time, like I felt like it was a really, really long time. I decided to turn back again. But this time I just like, oh. Like from the corner of my eye, I already saw it. Already. At this point, I'm just like cursing internally because they say like if you curse, then like maybe the whole thing you won't come and disturb you, right? So I was just like in my head, like, oh my god, go away, go away, go away while I'm cycling. Then suddenly from behind me, I heard my friend calling me and I said, like, eh, hey, pao, Then I, nope. I refused to turn back. But then like, my friend decided like, pulled up like, beside me. Uh, then I was like, wow, bro, I need to tell you something and say, don't say. Later, uh, when we reach like, the safra, then you update me. Uh. Also at that point of time when my friend finally caught up, right? Then I started to see, start seeing people in front of me and like, the people at the back. So that was super, super, super weird for me. Because uh, like, I may have been hidden by a ghost. I don't know. I was in a overnight camp, like a three-day, two-night camp in school. Uh, we had this tradition of um, these night walks or like a ghost hunt kind of thing. Uh, our seniors all came back for the night walk and then they were all like prepping with us and everything and then suddenly some guy takes out like these uh, incense sticks and then like he puts them outside our drama room and then he's like, you know, hey, you gotta like pray and everything, make sure nothing happens. But it was like a bit taken aback because like, what's gonna happen? Like, nothing's gonna happen. What are you gonna do this now? You're freaking out everybody. So after the whole night walk was done, um, <laughs> we sent everybody back to the classrooms and they all went back to sleep. That was around like 2 a.m. As we were reaching back to the class, the, the drama room, we noticed that on the third floor um, in this corner, 
um, we heard a lot of banging coming from the classrooms. We thought someone had like ran in or like someone was like rummaging through that um, classroom. But the thing is, all the students uh, in that camp were sleeping in a different block on the other side. So there shouldn't be anybody there at 2 a.m. on the third floor inside the classroom rummaging through the Zafla. We sent one of our guys to go and check it out. And we saw him come out from the staircase, stand outside the classroom and look into the classroom. And then he starts staring at something. And we were calling out to him like, Hey bro, like what, what's happening? He didn't say a word. He walks into the classroom and then we hear the banging but like this time way louder. So we decide to like run out and find out what happened. Like maybe he got injured or something. And as we go to the classroom, we see that the classroom is completely normal. The tables and chairs are all like set up nicely. And the funniest part was the door was locked. So we couldn't enter the door. It's like literally latched. So no one could have entered. So we were just freaking out. Like. So when we go down, we asked like our colleagues and our staff, like, do you see him come out of the classroom and run away or something? And like, no, they didn't see him come out. Uh, for about two hours, we searched the whole school for this one missing guy. At about 4, 4.30 a.m., we all just sat down outside the drama room. The incense stick was like just about finishing. As it finished, suddenly we see our guy walking from that staircase out. <laughs> we rush over and we're like, dude, what happened? He was like, what do you mean what happened? I went up to check the noise and I came back. And I was like, huh, it's, it's 4.30 right now. You've been gone for two and a half hours and he did not know what happened. All he remembered was he went up the staircase, he kind of like blacked out because like he said it was very dark so he doesn't know what happened. Next thing he knew, he was just coming back down the staircase. But he seemed fine. He didn't seem anything wrong or anything but the rest of us were just like, we went up the same staircase, everything was fine, there was no damage, nothing. And then we brought him out to the classroom to even show him. But this time we went into the classroom, we saw that the chairs and the tables were all flipped around. So, Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And ring the notification bell down below. And watch our other videos over there. Bye. I hope I have a good sleep tonight. Amen, amen, amen.